Uh, David Fine back here from Keys Moz, and I'm here again two days in a row. I'm looking for the rarest butterfly in the United States, the amethyst hair streak. I've got over a thousand man hours in the field looking for this butterfly in my entire life, 24 years of searching for it. I've seen three, one on Big Pine Key, one on Bahia Honda Key, and one in Broward County. And so um, it's been a long time since I've seen one. And I just got a report from a fellow YouTuber, Cool Critters, and check out his YouTube channel. Uh, it's in the link below. Uh, my buddy Michael let me know that he saw a female amethyst hair streak, which looked like a very fresh specimen um, in a local park, actually just a couple miles from my house. And we went yesterday and my kids and I, and I was not able to find any amethyst hair streaks. We did find some fulvous hair streaks on the sea grape. But, um, I believe that was a fresh specimen. It, it must have emerged somewhere close. I'm not going to reveal the location of this place, but uh, it's in Broward County. It's in a park and we're just going to go look around. My hypothesis is that a female butterfly will fly around, lay eggs, her offspring will reproduce and, and there will be a short time, maybe two, three, four days where there will be siblings from that one female that you can find. The butterfly is only that big. It's, it's a less than a half inch wingspan, very, very tiny, but magnificent in its colors. The underside is like, is really bright, bright green and the, the dorsal side, metallic blue. And, and one of the most impressive butterflies. If, if an amethyst hair streak was two or three inches long, it would be world known worldwide as one of the most magnificent butterflies anywhere. So uh, guys, we're gonna get out there and we're gonna see if we can find one. <sighs> Early in the morning, get my coffee in. I'm a coffee guy, guys. All right, so all is, guys, the goal is to get one live. I mean, I, I don't really need specimens for a collection or anything like that. My goal is to get one live, and I want to get a female, a live female amethyst hair streak, because if I do... <laughs> We're getting eggs. People have raised amethyst hair streaks on buttonwood. Um, people have raised them on um, Abezia lebek, the uh, lady's tongue, this big exotic legume tree that we have growing in South Florida. Um, but it's it's uncertain exactly what their native host plant is. They're so rare, it, they live in the canopy, so nobody ever sees them. Nobody ever sees them ovipositing. So, that's kind of something I'd love to see. I'd love to see natural habits of the female. Now, the only female I've ever seen was on a sea grape tree. Uh, this guy, Michael, found his on a sea grape tree, the female. The males I've found have all been on flowers. Is there anything to the sea grape thing? I don't know, I mean, but we're gonna check that out. We're gonna check out the sea grape tree and that we found this butterfly on, or that Michael found this butterfly on. And I'm going to um, just walk around and see what I can find. All right, unlike yesterday when I was here, I was here in the late afternoon and the sun was coming from the west. It was beating down on this side of the sea grape. Well, in the morning, the sun's gonna be coming up from the other side. So it's, I just dropped my kids off from at school. And uh, so it's first thing in the morning, it's like 8.30 in the morning. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around to this side of the tree and see if we can find some sunlight driven butterflies. In fact, what I wanna do guys, I wanna show you, I'm gonna show you one of the best nectar sources around for many different species of butterflies. This is sea grape guys. And these are the little flowers that on the sea grape trees. Now, if you can find a sea grape that's in full bloom. So I, I have a feeling that's why the fulvous hair streaks were here yesterday. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna see if that female fulvous hair streak laid any eggs for me. Um, but oh, oh, there's a hair streak, guys. Just flew. I didn't even see him. Where'd he go? I just saw a hair streak. He's on one of the lower branches. 
Oh, I don't see where he went. He looked, he looked dark brown like a fulvus. That's what you get when you try to do video and look for a bug that's less than an inch long at the same time. Sometimes like if you just give a, a branch a little tap, like, a little tap like this, just gives a look. Oh, he just flew. I think it was a fulvous hair streak, guys. It flew up into the tree. Uh, but if you give, if you give a limb just a little bit of a tap like this, I use my net. Just give it a little bit of a tap. Tap. If there's anything on the branch, it, it'll be enough to make it fly, but it won't be scared enough to fly away. It'll usually. If it's something sitting in like hidden over here, you give the limb a little bit of a tap, the butterfly will kind of fly up and land somewhere else close by because it's not like totally freaked out. But if you go around like, you know, whack and stuff like that, then the butterfly gets scared and flies away. So um, I'm just gonna tap some of these limbs. Not many people video pyralid moths. I think they're pretty cool. In the Keys Moths Project, as we found, we found out just how diverse this group is. And it's very challenging to tell them apart in nature. This little guy here that keeps flying. Ecclesia is a word for church. And I believe they call it that because of all the windows and the wings almost as if it were stained glass. But they live in the grasses and they readily come to lights, black lights and such. Another butterfly, zebra, zebra long wing. Our Florida State butterfly. It's always interesting as you walk through, as you walk through these, uh, the grass, all the cool little bugs that actually live there. This is actually a pretty little pyralid moth, orange and, orange and yellow with black. It's a really pretty little guy. All right guys, so the sea grape tree revealed no butterflies at all. Uh, actually, I did see a couple fulvous hair streaks, but not this time, guys. Uh, so I'm going to go check around the park a little bit, different areas where I know where there's some flowers and such. But um, we don't know what the confirmed host plant for Colostrum and Macedes is. There's a few things that have been listed, the latest of which that I've heard of is buttonwood. And not too far from the sea grape tree where Michael found this uh, Chlorostrym and uh, Mycetes, the amethyst hair streak. There's a couple silver buttonwoods. I know buttonwood is a native plant that's actually in the mangrove family that lives down here in South Florida. Since these silver buttonwoods are close, that I would just kind of come and, and tap these just in case there's female amethyst hair streaks um, looking to lay eggs. Chlorostrym my CDs would probably lay eggs right in the little little buds right here. If I were to look for eggs, it could be in the new growth on the leaves, but most hair streaks in this family lay eggs on the reproductive parts of the plant. So if they were to lay eggs, it would be right in this little clump of little flowers before they develop into seeds. And you can see some of the older ones here that are brown. That wouldn't be it, but the developing ones, the little developing flowers is probably where the larvae would, uh, or the, the eggs would be laid. In fact, is that an egg? Hold on guys, I'm gonna show you this. All right guys, this little developing thing right here is really where you would wanna look. And right on the tip, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. 
right on the tip of this little flower bud, there looks like there was something that could be a Lysenid butterfly egg on the very tip of that ball right there. I don't think it is, guys. No. I'm 44 and my eyes are not quite what they used to be, guys. The actually open flowers would be a great place for to find caterpillars or, or eggs, or like I said, the developing flowers, which these ones haven't opened yet. That would be the place where Chlorostrymon mycetes would lay eggs, if I were to guess. If That is, if buttonwood is in fact a native host plant. I believe it might be. I know it's been raised on it before, it's still a mystery so there's like three buttonwoods here uh in this just in this little parking lot and literally our sea grape tree is right over there so it could be oh, that was a dragonfly uh it could be that the mycetes hair streak came from this very one of these very buttonwood trees all right guys so our sea grape tree was a bust uh for the second time and I went and looked at some of those buttonwood trees and I didn't, all I saw was a fiery skipper, a female fiery skipper. There's a little clearing right here and I'm gonna kind of show you. The edges of the hammock all around this little clearing are all loaded with Bidens. And so one of the favorite nectar sources of all hair streaks are Bidens. It's, it's a very consistent thing. They bloom all year long. Let me see if I can find one. Yeah, let me show you a Biden real quick guys because I'm going to be scanning the Bidens real quick, looking for butterflies and specifically my seed amethyst hair streaks. Here, here's a Biden flower. All right, so these are Bidens alba. No relationship to Joe Biden, but we may know them as shepherd's needle as well because they get these little, these little seeds that stick in your socks and people find them super annoying. They thrive mode like roadsides and grasses because uh, they grow so quickly that when a lawnmower comes and chops them down, they sprout right back up. They start pushing flowers. And this, this composite flower, butterflies, moths, everything loves them. Now this is also the host plant for the um, dainty sulfur so you can actually find dainty sulfurs in fact i just found a just found an inchworm check it out found a little inchworm that's on cedar uh, if i had you know what guys comment down below what do you think this inchworm is uh it's on cedar it's a mallow malvaceae um, I'm going to, since there's nothing else, I'm going to take this little guy home and raise it and see what it, it looks like. It's pretty much fully grown. If I, uh, if I'm correct, it shouldn't have all that much further to go to get to the moth. So we're going to find out what that is. It's always good to have a little four ounce cup in your pocket with a lid just for that reason. Cedar is a plant that grows commonly also in roadsides in my, I have them, plenty of them in my backyard. Let me see if I can find it. So this is it here. I don't see any of the flowers. They have a little yellow mallow type flower. Um, you gotta learn how to look in the grass, like in the, in down here, these are, these plants are only four or five inches tall. They get mowed. There's all kinds of stuff. Like this is native poinsettia. Just like you buy in the stores, you can see the beginnings of the little red leaves here. Well, this is a host plant for the Ello Sphinx. So there's all kinds of things that you can find. I mean, you never know. You, know, you find caterpillars on these little plants down here in South Florida, and sometimes they turn out to be stuff that's really cool and you didn't even know it. So you just gotta pay attention. I love this. This park, some of these parks really do a good job of planting trees and having lots of good natural areas. Okay, look at all the Bidens here. So, what I'm not going to do, 
I'm not going to run back there because I don't want all of the Biden seeds sticking all over my socks. Because if I were to, if that were to touch your your shoes, let me, let me show you what happens when this stuff touches your your clothing. Boom. Those things stick to your clothes and you got to spend the next hour when you get home plucking them all off. So I'm not going to have that happen. Um, so I'm just going to look back here and see if I see any hair streaks. Now, if I see a hair streak on one of the flowers, I will go back, but I'm not going back for a zebra. There's a zebra. All right. Lots of, cor actually, Cordia Glabrosa. Look at this, guys. This is all Cordia Glabrosa. Uh, bloodberry. They call it. The, it has a light, bright red berry. Hair streaks. Love this stuff. There's not many flowers on it, but that's a great, 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 great. You might if there if this thing was loaded with these little white flowers, I would probably camp out at this thing and just sit here and wait. And there's a buttonwood tree right here, silver buttonwood. So sometimes when you're in a little clearing like this, guys, uh, this 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 acts as a windbreak. So there's like a little clearing, there's some flowers, and a lot of times what, what'll happen is male butterflies will come and perch kind of like mid-range, like, you know, six to 10 feet up and just wait for females to go by. Firebush is for sure one of my favorite nectar sources in South Florida. So if you're down here in South Florida, and you ha you're planning on putting a butterfly garden, you must have this stuff in your butterfly garden because you see the zebra, you know, floating around. There's all kinds of stuff that loves it. Sulfurs, a uh, big pyarid butterflies love it. Um, the uh, swallowtails love it. Z Heliconids love it. And it's a host plant for the Pluto Sphinx and the Tursa Sphinx. So hummingbirds also love it. So if you're gardening for hummingbirds, you know, check out a zebra. Yep, 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 yep. Got spread wing skipper. It's a fresh one sitting on the Biden flower. Yeah. <sighs> Stuff's not cooperating with me today, guys. Tropical checkered skipper, Pyrgus oileus. We have Pyrgus communis, which is in our area as well. Oileus has more dark markings. Actually, I'm in the sun, aren't I? Blocking the sun from our little dude. He's like, I don't appreciate that, Mr. Keys Moths, man. Uh, I am not seeing. Any hair streak action, guys? Well, folks, <clears throat> I'm going to head for the hills here. Actually, I'm going to check another park close by and see if I can find any blooming um, sea grape trees there. But uh, that wraps it up. Unfortunately, no silver band. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, no amethyst hair streaks for us today. Uh, guys, I am still going to be on the hunt for the rarest butterfly in United States and you now people might argue on that if it's actually the rarest butterfly in the United States there may be some that are more rare but uh this thing it, it lives like all right see, check this out guys see this this hammock right here there's flowers down near on the bottom but the butterfly lives historically up on the on the canopy so this little tiny butterfly that's like uh, you know, less than an inch wingspan. It's, and it's green. It lands with its wings closed most of the time. It's green. So it blends in when it lands on a leaf, lives up in the canopy. It'll come down every now and then for, you know, for the right flower or, or whatever. But, um, they just, they're just not friendly to people viewing them. So, um, if you have the right flowers, you have the right plants that can help. Uh, if you live in South Florida, plant some of the plants that you, you actually want to see one. Plant bloodberry in your yard. Um, the uh, Cordia glabrosa, that's a good one to have. Um, a sea grape tree would be great because I have seen them on sea grapes. And Mike 
uh, green, found them on sea grapes. Oh, by the way, check out his channel, links in the description. Cool Critters, um, pretty cool little channel focusing on insects in South Florida. Um, gosh, it's, it's discouraging to your whole life. I'm trying to find this butterfly, so I will find it. I'll make a video on it one day and um, we'll share it with the YouTube world. So uh, in the meantime, if you have any suggestions, if you ever see, if you live in South Florida, probably Broward and Dade counties or Monroe County, and you see a little green hair streak about that big, um, snap a picture and send it to me. I'd love to see it because I'd, I'd love to document this life cycle. I mean, that's my goal. Uh, I'd love your help and uh, bringing me to where there might be little micro colonies of this butterfly. In fact, uh, they can thrive in urban areas. In fact, uh, down downtown Oakland Park, uh, my buddy bought a new house because a couple years ago now, but he bought a new house. And as he was remodeling his house in the middle of the concrete jungle in Oakland Park, he had a little electrical electrical outlet that he was going to install. He had it sitting on his counter in the back of uh, uh, the backyard and he saw a little green butterfly on it. So he snapped a picture and sent it to me. And sure enough, it was the amethyst hair streak came and landed on his a little electrical outlet. Uh, that makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't know why he that would have landed there. It was a male. Uh, but he goes, is this is this something that's interesting to you? And I'm like, what? I drove right over. By the time I got there, butterfly was gone. I looked around. There was no habitat at all anywhere. So it's just people's houses, middle of a big neighborhood. So it didn't didn't make a lot of sense. But um, when it comes to a, something that small, habitat is a relative term. One tree can be the habitat for a butterfly that big. So you just got to figure out what tree that is, and um, we'll find them, guys. Uh, I'm actually enjoying myself, be, be honest with you. I'm going to go check another park. Uh, if there's anything interesting there, I'll bring you another video. So uh, like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got some, got plenty of action coming up on our Keys Mods uh, channel. And we've got um, some neat, uh, we're going through all the mods of the Florida Keys. So I, I'm, I'm going through, you know, 20 years of, of history here, 20 years of of um, surveying the Florida Keys, and we've got over 600 species. So check out the website, it's keysmoz.com. Uh, until next time, guys, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care now. Bye.